Hi guys, a um, bit more on our little stepper motor, compulse motor setup. It is buried under there, under that flywheel which I fitted to it. Inside that flywheel, if you want to do this, stop it. Inside the flywheel, you can see I have six magnets, three are out north, three are out south. So an alternating field, um, a large coil off a shaded pole motor, which is just hooked to our. 12 volt LED house light. Um, I had to switch over to a 2N3055 because I blew my um, high voltage transistor up and I'm applying too low a resistance to the base. So uh, this one seems to be working okay. I just have to be a little more careful with it. I've added a uh, pot in there as well just to tune it because we're going to be lifting the voltage fairly high but I've retained the 1K resistor now just so as I don't um, turn the pot down too low and blow that transistor up as well. I must have a hundred of those things now, if not more. I've got a badly sulphated battery here, which the scope is hooked up to. Uh, that is going to be our charge battery. And I also have a good battery. And I'm going to show you what happens when you put a healthy battery onto the system as opposed to a badly sulfated battery. Um, so what we basically have here is a resistor very high in resistance and a resistor very low in resistance. A healthy battery would be between 1 and 1 1.5 ohms, somewhere around there. Um, I have no idea what this one is because um, it is pretty bad. Okay, uh, we have our amp meter hooked up to the system and at the moment we are set at 9 volts which is where we are going to start and um, we will see what happens as we lift the voltage up and I will have to trim the pot a little as we are going but uh, not too much so we will start her up so at the moment 463 rpm no action from our lights and we'll just turn the scope back on now at the moment I don't have the healthy battery hooked up I do have the negative lead on but that of course will be doing nothing so we are only charging our badly desulfated battery or sulfated battery should I say and you can see our voltage max across that battery is between 100 and 104 volts so you can clearly see that the high voltage pulses are definitely going across that battery or through it so what we'll do now is we'll hook the healthy battery on just in parallel with this one and you should be able to hear RPM increase, which we do have. Well, the only thing we didn't show you was the uh, current draw. So I'll disconnect the healthy battery again. 121 milliamps at 9 volts, doing 467 RPM. And we'll hook our healthy battery back up. About 116 milliamps at 9 volts, 496 RPM. And you'll see here now the scope is dead flat. Voltage max is only just touching 14 to 16 volts, so with a uh, 2 to 4 volt peak to peak. I'll just, um, I'll just uh, scope the voltage division to bit here and try and bring that back down, which we may not be able to do. Now you can see the spikes across the battery that is healthy, but um, it's only a maximum of 12.32 volts, and that is simply because we have lowered the resistance of the load 
So we'll disconnect that again. And we'll bring that back up. And then once again, you can see our high voltage pulse is going across the battery. So the pulses we're producing are about 102 volts. And we're only putting 9 volts in. So um, the inductive kickback is uh, pretty high in the voltage when we have a high resistance across the load. So uh, what we'll do now is we'll switch her up to 12 volt. And you can hear it labour a little bit there. Just adjust the pot a little bit. And you can see that our neon has started to come on. 488 RPM 135 milliamps and our maximum voltage now is about 144 volts peak to peak of 132 134 let's see if we can stabilise that a bit oh, needs to trigger up a couple of engines Okay, our frequency is 407 hertz. That's pretty high for a uh, pulse motor setup, but very low in a solid state. So, um, let's go and turn the voltage up a little bit more. Now you can hear now that it's labouring. The RPM probably dropped, if anything. RPM. So there was pretty much well no change with that voltage lift. A little bit more current. So we'll go ahead and we'll lift her up a bit more. So we're now on 20 volts, 163 milliamps. Still around 485 RPM. And we have a 130 volts roughly across that battery at the moment. So that's enough to give you a bit of a boot if you touch it. And I'll see if I can tweak this pot up a little more. Alright, well let's lift the voltage a little more and we'll see what happens. Alright, we're 24 volts now. Nothing. Oh, there we go. And away we go. Okay. It just hits that point where it takes off. A little bit of churning. So what we'll have a look at now is the scope. And I'll just open that up a bit. Right, so now we have uh, voltage still around 142 volts. Our frequency is now 1.16 kilohertz, which is pretty good for pulse motor. So now we get into a frequency where we can desulfate the battery reasonably quick, as far as the pulse motor goes. Uh, Nearly 1400 revs, <laughs> that's pretty good for a stepper motor. And of course, um, 12 volt LED being driven from that coil and the rotor is shining away quite brightly there. So we're going to go and uh, lift her up a few more volts, see what happens. So now we're at uh, 27 volts. 157 milliamps, 1538, 39, 40 RPM. Nice bright LED. And of course, our neon's going flat out because of the uh, high resistance across the battery. And we're now 1.164 kilohertz. So 
doing pretty good for a stepper motor. Uh, 1540 RPM. But um, we'll pick our power supply up and see what happens. Okay, well I've never seen a stepper motor going that quick before. 1700 RPM. Nice bright light. Frequency is now 1.164 kilohertz. 124 volt pulses across the um, badly uh, sulfated battery. So neon is uh, shining away quite brightly due to the battery being bad. And I'm not going to hook up the 12 volt battery that is healthy to this because that will definitely upset the situation here when we have 31 volts going through. But that's what we have. Uh, that's all my power supply I can put out is 31 volts. 157 milliamps. You'll notice that the amp cord didn't go up or down too much where we lifted the voltage from uh, 9 volts up to 31 volts. So um, pretty consistent on the current draw. Also driving a uh, load as well with the rotor. I'll actually remove that and we'll see how much difference it makes. Oh, there we go. Must be just about a record for a uh, stepper motor. One point one six four kilohertz, seventeen hundred and ninety three revs a minute. So from those two figures, you'll be able to uh, work out how many pulses per second it's putting out, which is of course one point one six four kilohertz. 1,164 pulses per second. What I should have said is you'll be able to work out how many pulses per rev we're putting out from that. But anyway, there you have it. One ultra fast um, stepper motor. What we're going to look at next is this bigger one here. This is actually a synchronous motor. That's the info there. Now this has eight wires coming out of it. So um, it should be a whole lot of fun working that lot out. But at a guess I would say it's probably four individual coils that's how these um, larger ones are normally set up the uh, synchronous stepper motors a little different than the way these ones are set up but uh, we'll have to play around with that and see what we get from it cheers guys um, of course this video will be on the forum the schematic for it is also on the forum all you have to do is add a pot between 1 and 5k, whatever you like to do, and uh, that'll give you a little tuning on the circuit as well. Lead motor actually has already done this. Um, go check out the video he's made, and he also has one of it driving a fan. So, um, but he's pulling a fair bit of current as well, apparently. So, um, maybe not the best motor to use that he's got, but it's certainly working and um, very easy to build. Doesn't much simpler than this. Till next time.